One of the factors that makes deploying things in the cloud so cool is that we deal with everything ultimately as code. When we're dealing with a VM in this case, and we're going to deploy a VM, we have the opportunity to add onto it what's called an extension. So let's take a look at PowerShell for a second here. And in our PowerShell ISC, I have a little bit of code, and this is going to install a web server role inside a VM. And then in there, we're going to open the default file, which is the IIS start.htm. We're going to add some content. And that content is going to say, welcome to my web server. We're going to insert the name of the web server, whatever that may be. And we'll add on to the end of that Azure rocks. So this is a little PowerShell and we're going to add this to our VM as an extension. We're going to do this in a couple ways. All right, and let's hit the add button and create ourselves a new VM. So we'll pick a Windows Server for our first go and we'll choose a Windows Server 2019 for this and just hit create. And we need a name, so we'll call it Win Extension 0. And let's set our region and we'll go with the East US. Even though we are deploying one VM, we still want to have some kind of high availability option. This is a good best practice. So in this case, I'm just going to choose an availability zone and we'll just go with zone one. Now we need a size for our VM. I kind of like the B2MS size and then we'll give it a username and password and we'll scroll down here. And in this case, we want to have an allowed port and that's going to be for HTTP and HTTPS and we'll hit next. And next we have our disk configuration, which we can leave alone. We'll have our network config next, where we'll build ourselves a new virtual network, and we will need a public IP address. So we'll hit next. And I'll disable boot diagnostics, because uh, they're not really necessary for this build. And on this advanced screen is where we can set up our extension. There are many extensions to choose from, so let's click on this select an extension to install, and that'll open up a sidebar. This is uh, the list of extensions that we can install, and at the bottom you can hit load more, and there's several more down here. But the one that we're interested in today is the custom script extension. So let's select that, so we'll hit create. And now it wants to know where our file is located. So I'm gonna hit our blue file button here and I will choose that same PowerShell script we were looking at, IIS install. And now it wants to know if there are any arguments. So the arguments uh, depend completely on the PowerShell script that you're running or batch script or whatever else it is. And in this case, I don't really have any, so I'm just going to leave that blank and we'll hit okay. So it's really that simple. So let's do our review and create. And our validation has passed, so let's hit the Create button. All right, our VM has finished deploying, and let's go to the resource group, and we'll click on our VM, which is Win Extension 0, and we'll grab our public IP and open that in a new tab. And there we go, the custom script extension installed successfully, deploying IIS and customizing the default web page to say, welcome to my web server with the computer name, Azure Rocks. So this is cool, but let's look at another way to install extensions. And we'll do this on a existing VM. So here is another VM that was in that same resource group called existing VM. And if we look at the extensions blade here, there are no extensions on this system. And let's take this public IP and open that up. And as you can see, there is no listener on that IP. So there's no web server here. So let's fix that. So we'll go back to the VM to extensions and hit add. And we're presented with the same custom script extension and as well as the other extensions in the list. And let's choose custom script again and hit create. And we'll select our file again. There's our IIS file and we'll hit open. And we don't need any arguments in this case again, so we'll hit okay. And in our notification window here, our deployment tells us that it was submitted successfully. So we'll click that. And this will take a couple minutes to install. We have completed the install of the extension as well as the IIS role. So let's go back to the tab. And let's refresh. And there we go. Now that is working as a web server and it's got the correct name here. And that was again pulling from the computer name variable. So it is working on each system. So we've looked at 
deploying on new VMs through the portal and existing VMs in the portal. There is one final way that we're going to look at doing extensions, and that is through code. So in Visual Studio, I've got a project open for a nested deployment. And this will be linked in the description below. And this goes out to my GitHub. And in here we have a web server. So like all templates, this particular template has a schema, content version, parameters, variables, resources, and outputs. So in this case, relating to the extension, parameters really don't matter in this example. But in the variable section here, you can tell we've got several different items. And those all do relate to this extension. So the first one here is the file URI, and that is where the actual PowerShell file is located, and that is in Azure storage in this example. Then we have our arguments, which in this case is nothing, so I've just put a blank space there. And then in the next three items, we're gonna grab those different pieces so that we can use them as part of the extension. So down in the resources section, we have our virtual machine. And then we have embedded in that virtual machine a resource. So most resources that we're deploying in the infrastructure world can have a nested resource in them, and extensions are one example of that. So we've given the extension a name, a location, and then we have the properties. And this is where we choose that this is a publisher of Microsoft.compute. The type is custom script extension. And then it has a handler version of 1.7, and then the settings. And that's where we reference the particular file that we're deploying as part of this extension. And then the protected settings, which is the command to execute or could be a password. Uh, your arguments could also be in here as I have done. And then when we deploy this, it will again deploy our system with the script extension installed as part of the web tier. So let's do this deployment and we'll right click on our project. And this time we'll deploy to the ARM extension demo resource group and that'll open in a few seconds. Okay, and we'll click our edit properties here, and we're just going to deploy a single instance of this server, and we'll just deploy a web server. You can certainly deploy all three tiers if you want to. Then you can choose what size systems. I'm using small systems, and these are all spelled out inside the templates, and then this will be a Windows deployment because we're using a Windows PowerShell script for IIS, and so I'll hit save, and we'll hit deploy. So this will just take a few minutes. And now we're in the ARM extension demo resource group and we have our one VM and this one is sitting behind a load balancer. So you can have many more VMs with that custom script extension installed. So let's open the load balancer. And then we have our public IP address here. So we'll grab that and let's open that in a new tab. And as you can see, the deployment has run successfully through ARM as well. And we've got our custom name in our text here. So just to recap, we've done a brand new VM in the portal with a custom script extension. Then we did one on a existing VM as well as a deployment through ARM on a brand new system. So the limits around what you can do with custom script extensions are really just your imagination and your ability to script it out. So explore that some more. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Have a great day.